Hello, Loveland. I'm here with uh, friends of the Loveland Farmers Market, Haley, Rebecca's child, and Ella Mershon. Yeah. And uh, so I want you guys to first of all tell me what is, tell me about Friends of the Loveland Farmers Market. What is it? Well, Friends of the Loveland Farmers Market is a group of citizens who are working together to return the farmers market to the Jackson Street Market location in, in the historic district. Our biggest concern is that uh, in 2015, when the market was located to the bowling alley, vendors saw a significant reduction in sales, and this is mostly due to decreased traffic. Uh, we had 30% less people visit the market, and we believe that's because it's a destination location that people, you know, just simply do not want to drive to. Now, what we saw that sales dropped an average of 30 to 40%, and one vendor reported a 70% drop in sales. That simply can't continue. The farmer's market will fail. So, so about how many members do you have? And <laughs> Well, that's, that's a good question because it's growing every day. Um, and that's our big goal is to make people aware of this challenge to the future of the farmer's market and to get people involved. Because ultimately, uh, we believe that Loveland deserves a great farmer's market. And we know that residents have a vested interest in its continuing to thrive. Um, so to answer your question, right now I think we have about 80-something members on our Facebook group mm -hmm. and another 25 who have committed to come, plus who have committed to come to the city council meeting on the 2nd. And can I say that this has just been since Sunday, since, since we put the group, actually put the group on Facebook yeah, it's yeah. really exciting. So that's only about four days, yes. four <laughs> yeah. or five days. Yeah, people really care, and it's definitely snowballing. And you, and you plan to go to the next council meeting, and what was the date you said? Uh, the date is February 2nd, and we're willing to follow up on the 23rd as well. Is it the 9th? I'm sorry, February 9th. Why do I keep saying that? Well, February 9th. Okay. It is February 9th. <laughs> and, and the meetings start at 7 o'clock now, and it's going to be at the, the city building. Okay, so um, the process is that the uh, Loveland farmer, Farmer's Market would apply for a permit, a vending permit, for a farmer's market in Loveland. And mm -hmm. um, I was told that it was denied, but the city manager has told me that he doesn't have a formal, formal application yet. Mm -hmm. But his statement said that he, he basically wasn't going to issue the permit. So... That means the farmer's market is left without a home again this year, searching for home because the bowling alley is gone, the building there is gone, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it would be perilous to open the farmer's market there because the property may be sold and developed at any minute. Right. The, um, uh, so the city manager says that he's, he's not inclined to issue the permit because of parking concerns and well basically he said traffic concerns um, so so what are your comments about the traffic well we definitely respect the city's position um, on traffic and we understand that traffic is a challenge to Loveland and the historic district overall uh, we definitely respect what business owners have to say about inconveniences and the footprint of the market However, we believe that the market brings such great value to businesses and to the people of Loveland that it's worth, um, you know, resolving any minor inconveniences that might be experienced. Uh, the economic impact of what what is called sticky money, because uh, is so great on the for the businesses that it's worth. Um, you know, working through these issues, okay? And sticky money basically is when people, and we've actually noticed that tourists from other cities are visiting our market. And so when they come on Tuesday specifically for the market, they actually visit the businesses all around it. And that creates this little tourist economy that, you know, we're not even talking about yet. Mm -hmm. So, and that's in addition to obviously the other really important um, you know, good things it brings to the community, like local foods and supporting our local businesses. 
So. Yeah, can I say also, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding traffic, that um, we had a discussion with Donna Bednar, and she had stated that she'd offered even to station police to help with traffic flow. And let's bear in mind that the market is not the only event that Loveland currently hosts. Uh, there are numerous, I think, marathons and mini marathons, walkathons, things of that nature, fundraisers. You know, I'm just kind of lumping them all into one. And then, of course, there's Christmas in Loveland, there's the art show, there's things like that. And while they're not on a weekly basis, uh, they do create traffic. So the question becomes what about those events as well? Yeah, I'm specifically, there, it, there is an event that's held in the summer on Wednesdays. Uh, summer concert series, which, held, which is held at approximately the same time as the market is held on Tuesdays, which might also be subject to these traffic concerns. So our question is, you know, how can we balance, you know, the goodness that these events bring to our city? You know, how, how can we overcome the, the traffic um, obstacles so that we can retain the charm? You know, um, so. the city manager also mentioned the fact that Branch Hill Guinea Pike would be closed again. And he said that was one of his concerns because uh, when that closes and it was closed this fall, uh, it did create quite a bit of pro mm -hmm. problems in Loveland. But I, I went back and read what Loveland Magazine published about that and it's, it's going to be closed again for 25 days beginning in the spring. And parking has also come up. Mm -hmm. And we're aware that between 100 and 140 additional spots are being added through the McCoy lot. Um, there's another lot, a dirt lot, just past the O'Bannon Creek Bridge that is an overflow lot for city events that's not being counted. When you look at the parking lot, the parking space count, it's not being counted. If people who are coming in from Route 48 from Lebanon use that overflow O'Bannon lot and able-bodied people, of course, and walk to the couple blocks to the market and did their shopping, they could exit from that lot without even taking their car through the city. One business owner, Tim Canada in particular, has has written about his concerns about the uh, the farmers market, uh, and he is directly across the street on Carl Brown Way from where the market is. Um, he says that um, the vendors' trucks block his parking for his business, mm -hmm. and that the lot itself where the farmers market takes up is supposed to be private or public parking. Um, so what do you say in response to what Tim has written, and he's written to you and talked to you too about mm -hmm. this? What, what's your response to a local business owner? And he may represent others in the mm -hmm. business district. Tim also says that the market competes in some ways with the existing businesses. He mentioned ice cream sales. Mm -hmm. A couple of businesses in downtown are selling ice cream, pizza is is being sold at the market and he says these are people that come from out of Loveland into Loveland uh, they're not paying their fair share of taxes if any and competing with local businesses so those kind of that kind of lumps Tim's concerns in so how how do you want to address that as a brief response to his concerns again I feel that any inconveniences that businesses are experiencing we absolutely want to know because we want to minimize the footprint of the market and, and work together with area businesses so that it's a win-win situation for everyone. So absolutely, I would encourage Mr. Canada and any other businesses who are experiencing like trucks blocking their doorways or, or, or spaces to communicate with the market manager, Donna Bednar, and, and she can therefore take care of this problem. I mean, the other thing I, you know, I, I would like to address directly to um, Mr. Canada and other business owners that don't experience immediate increase in sales are that by supporting the local business owners, the vendors directly, and those other ven or those other businesses that are experiencing significant increase in sales on those days, that those are the people that actually go in and shop in his furniture store. Our local people who experience increased revenue around the farmer's market, they are his customers. And we just hope that he can look at that economic impact and, and find a way to share in what is really a win-win situation. Um, so let me open a can of worms. And I did ask Donna Bednar 
I've tried to get a hold of her this week to, to get her comments on the mm -hmm. situation. So Donna's the uh, founder and I guess director of the of the market. She's the market manager, yes. The market manager. Um, but Donna was recently kicked off the Loveland Beautification Committee and that's caused a, a lot of concern here in town. So all of a sudden Donna, another project Donna's involved in is being denied a permit to operate a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So do, do you guys, or will you, because I, I think you probably thought about this too, will you comment on that? And do you think there's this is some, um, some more of the political brouhaha that's going on in town? And how, how do you intend to resolve that issue, I guess? And uh, along with that, are you finding support, support from some of the council members? Because Dave Kennedy isn't acting alone on this. He's not going to spring this on the council and, and just do it unilaterally. Well, he can't. Yeah. Well, what I, how I would respond is that I really feel like focusing on any um, past political questions like this is not going to be productive for us going forward. Because what we really want to happen is for the city to get behind the farmer's market and work towards a successful you know, a, a resolution to this challenge um, because everyone stands to benefit from a thriving market. So the questions that we're posing to the city is why is it not behind us? You know, please get behind us and, and let's work together to see how we can make a return to Jackson Street Market possible. And, and Tim Canada also is a supporter of the market, he says it just in, is going to be in the wrong place, mm -hmm. and he'd rather see it on the Love of Madeira well, I, road in the Love of Madeira road corridor. I would respond to that. Okay, we, um, 2015 proved that a destination location will not result in a successful market. The uh, facility there at Jackson Street Market, which is owned by the farmers, or, I'm sorry, by the fire department and built specifically for the farmers market, um, it has everything that the market needs. You know. Um, location, visibility, you know, proven success. Regarding brouhaha, I'm, you know, I can't comment on that. You know, what I can comment on is the desire to see um, a great market continue to be great. And we deserve that. We really do. You know, um, you might want to reach out to Mr. Fitzgerald to see if he has any comments concerning the possible synergies but mm -hmm. you know at this point we can't say we can only venture to guess right yeah I mean it we just need them to be with us on this because uh, a great thriving farmers market is a win-win for everybody well I did I did ask Mark Fitzgerald via email for a comment on on the situation and he basically punted the ball to the city manager mm -hmm. so I'm not sure that Mark is going to respond at all mm -hmm. uh, maybe he will well, at that's the okay. council meeting or after the right. council meeting. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we just want, you know, let me just say that when I saw that the market wasn't going to return to Jackson Street, well, that possibly that could be uh, the situation, it made me really sad. It makes me sad because I think it's a loss for our community. And, you know, if there's any political thing that's going on, which I hope there's not, I hope that it's a misunderstanding and all of this can be resolved and that we can work together collaboratively to make this happen rather than, than being polarized. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and one last thing, we've had a lot of people ask us directly, why can't the market go somewhere else? And the best response that I can give to that is the market manager, Donna Bedner. She has thoroughly considered and, and vetted each possible location. And her experience and her knowledge of farmers markets um, instructs us and informs us that the best location is Jackson Street Market. And, and we're also very concerned that if it's moved to a destination, the outskirts of, of the city again, that we're going to see vendors leave um, and it will fizzle and, and cease to exist for the city. So I've also heard many people say that they come here specifically for our farmer's market. Other people have said that they move here for those kind of charming projects, such as the farmer's market. 
Um, so we believe that it benefits everyone and it benefits the city to work together to find a way to make it possible for it to return to Jackson Street Market where it thrives. I ironic that the, the uh, Jackson Street Market was built using fire association, firefighters association funds, not fire department, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. association. But also City of Loveland tax dollars were spent on the market. Mm -hmm. And then along comes Loveland Station and the farmers market were, were among other amenities in downtown Loveland that the developers said were so attractive to build those apartments in Loveland. And now mm -hmm. uh, the market is the first, I guess, to be squeezed right. out. I, I, I found a quote by um, then um, interim city manager, uh, was it Dave Duckworth? Help me uh, out here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, a, a, a very nice quote um, in the Cincinnati Inquirer touting, you know, the walkability of our city and how, you know, a thriving historic district and all this foot traffic would bring people to fill up the units at Loveland Station. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, again, we believe that that's what the city wants. We want this walkable, thriving hub where people are spending their money and, and businesses are doing well because of it. So, Again, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, and we all need to get together and, and, and make this happen. Okay. So, you know, um, and to your point, if that was the thought, and somehow we've gotten on off track, let's get back on track mm -hmm. again. Let's take yeah, let's that thought and just, and, and, and I'm sure there was a reason why uh, that was considered. I don't think people consider things. I don't think the city considered something that wasn't a value. And mm -hmm. I think that um, it's a benefit then to move that forward. Okay. Well, th thanks for uh, sharing with the Loveland residents what's going on. And uh, I can, so I can tell you good luck with your efforts. Thank so. you so much, and thanks for having us here to talk about this important issue. And, and can I say also that if people want to attend the uh, council meeting, uh, you can go to Meetup and, uh, and uh, register. And my group is uh, Loveland Interactive, or you can just find the Friends of Loveland Farmers Market Facebook group and, and add yourself there, and you'll find links to RSVP for the city council meetings there. Yeah, and... Uh, we would really appreciate your um, attendance and your participation, and we actually look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you too. Thank you.